and we're gonna continue making these cloud shapes. Before we get started, we have to make sure you have all the supplies you need. So you'll need some watercolor paper with a piece of painter's tape, a pencil, some paper towel, a water container to rinse your brush in, a paintbrush, and your watercolor paint set. first thing we're going to do is draw. So let's start drawing some hills just above this piece of tape. So you can press really lightly. Just some grassy hills like that. And then we're going to draw our Canadian goose. So we're going to start with the body. So we're just going to draw a big bump like that. We're going to come down and make a raindrop shape pointing to the side here we're gonna come underneath like that and then we're gonna draw the neck coming out from here so we're gonna go up Go right on top of your painter's tape. You'll have to draw that back in later. Now that we have the basic shape, we can start adding all the details in. So we're gonna actually separate this back area here, the body, into different types of feathers. So at the bottom, we're just gonna go up here and around like that. And these will be all little feathers. The bigger ones will be towards the top. So we'll separate this one into an oval with a line at the top. And then the back feathers are all the long ones. So you can draw long feathers here. These feathers in this area are all smaller feathers, so you're just gonna make little tiny bumps. Press nice and light. Even along the top. And these ones down here are just gonna be lines. Underneath here is just white, along with this area, and then the rest is black. Let's just add the detail to the face. There's a white patch that goes like that. And then we have the eye. So the eye, if you just draw a straight line from the top of the beak, this is where your eye is gonna be. The eye shape is an oval with two points on either side, and in the center of that oval is a circle. You can put a line going right through the beak, and on the top part of the beak, you can put an oval-shaped nostril. Here's a close-up picture of the Canadian goose, so you can see the face details a little bit better. Now that the drawing is complete, we can move on to the next step, which is painting. We're going to start to paint the background and the first thing we're going to paint in the background is the sky. So you can go ahead and just clean your brush, dry it, and take some of that blue paint and put it on the lid. You can add some water to that to make it a little bit more liquidy. 
And in our painting, the sun is setting, so we can add just a little bit of purple with the blue. With that bluish color now, you're gonna go ahead and paint in circular motions, creating cloud-like shapes. And you're gonna place the blue in different areas of the sky. So we're gonna take a little bit of this red, mix it in with this color here, and we're gonna do the same thing. right on top of some of the blue spots. Now we're just gonna take some water, dab our brush, and blend out these paint areas into the white paper, just using clean water. Just remember, right now we're painting the sky, so try not to get any of this blue paint on the hills. We're gonna take a little bit more red and add it here. A little bit more blue. I'm gonna make one more color for the sky that has a little bit more red in it. So I'll just go ahead and mix that red with some of the blue. With this color, we're gonna to continue to make these cloud shapes. So that's our sky and now we're going to move on to these hills. Take some of this green, put some in the lid. Add a little bit of water. Rinse your brush and now scoop out some of this yellow. So just take some of the yellow and we're just going to paint the tops of the two biggest hills. And we can wash our brush and mix these two colors together. So we should have just a nice light green. So you can paint the rest of the hills with the light green. 
go around the goose's face. Now we're just gonna take green straight from here. It's a little bit darker. And we're gonna go along the bottom here. So we're gonna take some of this green from here and I'll put it right on top of the yellow. Try our brush, take some more of this dark green now we're going to start making trees. So we're just going to make little dots all along the bottom, right above the tape. Make sure your brush is pretty dry for this step. Now we're gonna make a dark green. So we'll take some of this green here, put it in our lid, rinse our brush, take some black, just a little bit, and mix it with the green. This will make a nice dark green. dry the brush and then the same step we're going to make little trees so you just have to dab your brush just where the trees are Okay, once you're finished, we can take off the tape. And we can just fill in any missing areas here. Now we're gonna start with the water. For the water, we're gonna just start right at the top. We're gonna take some blue, put some blue over here. We're gonna lighten it up by adding a lot of water. We're just gonna make a bunch of horizontal lines all along the lake area. Once you're done applying all the blue paint, you can just wash your brush and take some water and blend out that blue paint into the white paper. So now we're gonna add some turquoise to the water. So take some more of this blue, add some water, 
and then we're going to take a little bit of green and mix it with the blue. And we're going to do the same step. So we're going to just add some lines. And now we're gonna blend them out. Just wash your brush and you can start blending. Now we can start adding the colors that are in the sky in the water. So the water is reflecting the sky. So we're gonna just take some of this color here that we used in the sky. And we're just gonna add a little bit of this purpley red in some areas of the water. Just by making horizontal lines blending them out. We're gonna add the reflection of these hills and trees. So you're going to take a little bit of this green and just put this green color right underneath the hills. Now we're going to take this dark green color and go right underneath the trees and try to make a reflection. just like that. Now the last step for the water is actually the reflection of the Canadian goose. So we'll take a little bit of black we're gonna add some water to it so it's really light just dry your brush and we're going to try to mimic this shape on our water. So we're going to go straight underneath with some of this gray color. As we create the reflection, we're going to shade it in just by making horizontal lines. And we're going to go ahead and make the neck. Just go straight up. I'm going to make the area of the reflection that's closest to the goose a little bit darker just by adding another layer of the black. And 
Now that the water is done, we can move on to the next step. painting the Canadian goose. You're going to take some black and you want to make sure that it's not watery. So make sure it's nice and thick and you can start painting the neck. We're going to leave a white area on the neck just so we can make it a little bit lighter. So this area is gonna stay white. We're going to leave a little white area just on the top of the head. Just like that. Now we can just rinse our brush just a little bit. Take off some of that paint. Make sure it's nice and dry. And we're gonna go in and just color in this white area here. Blend the black into it. And we'll do the same on the forehead. Now we'll do the eye. So make sure for this step, your brush is really dry. We just want to make that circle in the middle. Here is the close up again, just so you can see the details a little bit more closely. We're going to do the beak. So we'll make the line in the middle here. We'll do the line underneath. I'm gonna paint in the nostril. We're gonna then rinse our brush and shade in the rest of the beak just with clean water so it's a light gray color. Bottom, we'll leave a little bit of white at the top of the beak. Just a little bit like that. We're going to take some of this gray that's on our brush and we're just going to do underneath the head over here. Now we're just going to take some of this gray color and add it to the body. So this area of the Canadian goose is also white. So we just added three lines, one here, one there, and one along the bottom. We're going to rinse our brush, make sure it's nice and clean, and nice and dry. And then we're just going to blend And out some of this gray color. Okay, we'll go to the back area now. And I got a little bit of blue in here. So let's see if I can remove some of it. I'm gonna wet the paint 
take the paper towel and just take some of that color off that's not supposed to be there along the top here underneath the, these feathers. We'll put a little bit of gray and then we'll just rinse our brush, make sure it's dry and just blend it out. The next area that's gonna be black is gonna be these back feathers, the really big ones at the back. So you're gonna take some black, with very little water. You're gonna make a C shape and then the back of the feather will be all black. So here again, we're gonna make a C shape back of the feather is black. A C shape, back of the feather is black. like that. Now we're going to move on to brown. So we're going to take some brown, just put it over here. Now for the first step, we need really light brown. So we, we can mix this brown with some water to lighten up the pigment. Just make sure our brush is nice and dry. And we're going to do this area right over here of the feathers. All you have to do is make horizontal lines just on top of those vertical lines that we drew with the pencil. Here's a close up so you can see this step a little bit better. So now we're going to start on these feathers back here. We're going to take some of that black. Again, make sure your brush is pretty dry. And I want you to just outline these feathers. Once you're done that, you can take some of the brown. Make sure your brush is dry. So you want to paint half the feather brown and leave half of it white. Half the feather brown and half of it white. wash your brush make sure it's nice and dry and then you're just gonna lightly blend in that brown with the white So now we just have this area here. So for this step, make sure your brush is really dry. We're gonna paint each feather and we're gonna try not to get any paint on the pencil marks. So we're gonna leave white around each of those pencil lines. Thank you. 
So if we look at it, it's like we're doing a pattern. Brown, white, brown, white, brown, white, all along these top feathers. And we're going to do the same with the back, leaving that line that we put at the top white. And that's the last step of our painting. All you have to do is find a spot on the water to sign your name. I hope you had fun painting with me. I can't wait to see what you've created. Send me some pictures, some videos, and until next time, take care.